Professor Wergelis here continuing with a centralized version control system. Now, the next major issue that people encountered with a local version control system is that they needed to collaborate with other developers on that system. So let's say we're making a website. I have my local version control system and I have all these different versions of that website. Now, how can I develop with another developer? How can they get access to that version control system? To deal with this problem, a centralized version control system was developed. We call this a CVCS. Okay, over here we had a VCS. Okay, so you just add a C in front of it, CVCS. Now these systems, these CVS systems like Subversion, Perforce, have a single server that contains all the version files and a number of clients that check out files from that central place. For many years, this has been the standard for version control. Now that's fine, okay, I have a, I have a single server and then the computers, the local machines make requests to that server. So here's going to be a image. Here I have computer A and computer B. They have a file that they're keeping track of and all the versions of that file are on the centralized server. So here's my version database. I have version one, two, three, just like we saw before. This is on the server. This line here is gonna be connection over the web. I'm gonna do a poll. So I'm gonna pull this file to my local machine and I'm gonna make changes and then push it back to the server. If somebody else wants to collaborate, they can also pull the file, make changes, and push the file back up to the server, and then merge those changes if both people are changing the same file at the same time. Now, this is a good figure for a centralized version control system. I have multiple computers, I have a server, and the computers make a request to that server. Now, this setup offers many advantages, especially over local VCSs. For example, everyone knows a certain degree of what everyone else on the project is doing. Administrators have a fine-grained control over who can do what, and it's far easier to administer a CVCS than it is to deal with a local database on every single client. Let's say I have 100 developers. Let's say I go to Google. I have 1,000 developers. How can I keep track of that project that we're working on? In order to do this, they used a centralized version control system. However, this setup has some serious downsides as well. The most obvious is it's a single point of failure that the centralized server represents. So let's say if that server goes down for an hour, during that hour, nobody can collaborate at all or save versioned changes to anything they're working on. If the hard disk of the centralized database becomes corrupt and proper backups haven't been kept, you lose absolutely everything, the entire history of the project, except whatever single snapshots people have on their local machines is gone. And you would be devastated if you were working for Google and 10 years of work is now destroyed and you do not have the different version history. A local version control system suffers from the same problem. Whenever you have an entire history of the project in a single place, you're going to risk losing everything, and that is one of the worst side effects for a centralized version control system. It's great because now I can do collaborations. I can have multiple computers downloading that project and multiple people working in on a project at the same time, but if that project goes down, the entire system goes down, except for the current changes on the local machine. So now we're gonna talk about a distributed version control system. We're gonna do that in the next video.